Good morning. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming on this unholy hour after the party. Uh, this will be boring. Hopefully, no one will be falling asleep with the uh, So today, lecture will be about risk mitigation in everyday activities of Game Dev Studio. Uh, a little bit from my insight on my work with developers on a daily basis and some basic rules that should help you, hopefully, if introduces. Um, so, first, I would like to share with some insights from my daily, uh, daily practice the two most common mistakes in thinking amongst, uh, amongst the game developers. Uh, first thing, which is quite strange, but uh, I've met this uh, frequently, uh, having no effective hierarchy doesn't mean that you won't be able uh, that you won't have to accept the liability for acts or omissions of your company. So, it, if you don't have strict hierarchy, sorry, oh, I need to take this out. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. So, so if you don't have a strict and very uh, clear hierarchy in your company, uh, that doesn't mean that the responsibility of the company will be divided amongst every single pe person and it will be somehow more um, uh, better for you, uh, more safe. Uh, that's bullshit, like on the core of it. And the second thing uh, are standardized contracts. You do use standardized contracts. You should have drafts of every contract that you are using in everyday uh, activity of your, of your studio. However, having them, it's not cost and time efficiency if you are using only those standardized contracts. Uh, if you are not uh, tailoring them, adjusting them to the situation, because in the end, that may create more problems and that may create more work on your part uh, when resolving those problems. So, going after that, you, we need to remember that in Polish law, we have two general types of uh, responsibilities, uh, civil and penal. Civil li liability has two main sources that are most important for you, because you are, of course, everybody's perfect and no one goes to the criminal actions. So, uh, in case of civil liability, you have two main sources. Uh, contractual, so based on the contract. Uh, this uh, is in use when you have lack of performance uh, or improper performance of your contract. And the base uh, for this is Article 471 of the Civil Code, very nice lecture, uh, that says that the debtor is obliged to repair the damages resulting from non-performance or improper performance of an obligation unless uh, the non-performance or improper performance is a consequence of circumstances for which the debtor is not liable. So, in plain language, if you are in a situation that you cannot foresee, uh, we call it force measure, so acts of God, siła wyższa in Polish, then you, your resp uh, responsibility from the contract that was improper, uh, that the performance was improper proper, or there was lack of, lack of performance, may be uh, either limited or there may be none. So the best example for this is COVID. When COVID started two years ago, this was total force measure. This is something that nobody could predict. We didn't know how the governments will re react, how industry will react, how the business will be going. First few months were just guessing whether there will be new restrictions or not. Will we be, will we be able to go to the conference, uh, have regular business meetings, uh, run a studio, or whether there will be such restrictions that, uh, that everything will be closed and you will be uh, forced to sit at home. However, now, two years into the pandemic, in my opinion, you cannot say that uh, any problems resulting from the COVID uh, in connection with, of course, performance of the contract, uh, of the agreement, are a force of God, are a force majeure, um, acts of God, sorry. Uh, because right now we are two years into this. We know how the um, industry, how the business, how economy goes. We uh, start working from home. Home offices are now, I think, the core business uh, and the core model of working in game dev industry. So in most of the contracts that are um, concluding in the last year, maybe, year or so, 
almost every single lawyer, including me on the opposite side, when we have a limitation of the liability based on uh, acts of God, we exclude COVID uh, as a pandemic as a reason. Because two years into that, you cannot say that you were surprised that, oh my God, if I'm not vaccinated, that how I can, can I get sick? It's, it's your choice. Um, the second source of the civil liability um, is based on the provision of law. And uh, it results from tort, which is delict in Polish, in Polish or unlawful act, so czynnie dozwolone. And the base for it is it base for it is uh, very 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 familiar to you because it's in your everyday life, especially for example if you're a driver. This is Article 415 of the Civil Code, and it just says that whoever caused damage to another through his own fault, which is very important because you need to be in fault, uh, is obliged to repair it. So if you are speeding, and you cause an accident, your responsibility is the civil one. Mm, if you, for example, decided to go for two weeks to the cottage in the middle of the forest, but you know that you have a deadline in a week, and you know that you need for this your laptop, uh, internet connection, and of course uh, electricity because you need to power your laptop, and you didn't check it, that's your fault, because you didn't think about that. Uh, the separate thing is the penal liability, this is based on the provision of law, for example, penal code, and it refers to natural, natural person. In general, entities like the companies, oh, sorry, uh, like the companies in general, uh, are responsible from the penal liability in very lim limited scope resulting from the law. It's mainly based on the act on liability of co collective entities, but of course, none of you will do any criminal ever <laughs> because you are good people. <laughs> So, having that in our mind, we can go to the next slide. And the most impor important per uh, question in this uh, presentation, I think, so who is responsible? And the best uh, lawyers answer, well, it depends. It always depends. First of all, it depends on the type of business you are running and in what legal form. The responsibility for the sole proprietorship, so in osobowa działalność gospodarcza, will be totally different because a char characteristic feature of this form of activity is full responsibility of the person who conducts such business. So, for example, me, while I'm running my uh, legal advisory services as a sole proprietorship, I am fully responsible with all my assets, all my belongings, everything I do have, plus everything that my husband has because we are married and we have no division of assets. And that means that you almost, don't, you almost don't have any choice. You will be always responsible with all your personal property. Uh, from everything that will be arising in connection with, uh, res uh, as a result of your conduct, of business conduct. Uh, in case of partnerships, so very in very general, general spooky as above, you always need to remember that uh, partnership uh, uh, is always primarily responsible for its obligation. Uh, but in case of default, so in case when the creditor cannot satisfy from the partnership's asset, so from the entity's asset that they are having, so IP, computers, uh, offices, chairs, cars, etc., uh, the partners will be responsible with their own assets, private assets, private belongings. And the third, um, third, uh, third entity are companies, so spooky handlove, also in general, without dividing them if, into every single one. So the first and main rule is, of course, company is always responsible for its obligation. So company with all its assets, with share capital, with, uh, uh, again, computers, offices, uh, chairs, uh, staff, etc., etc. Then shareholders, but it's limited only to the amount of the contribution into the shared capital. So what you paid for your shares uh, what you put into the um, company's capital, that is all your liability for the uh, company's debt. 
However, we need to remember that in case of uh, companies, commercial companies, there may be uh, some kind of um, liability of the management board. And the best example of that is liability um, of the members of the management board in LLC, so limited liability companies, PUKAZO. Uh, this is especially for the tax liabilities and for the insurance contribution, so ZUS. So in case of any problems when you need to resolve your company and you have some debts that are unpaid and you are unable to pay them, first always taxes, then insurance contributions, they will be paid off and if the, if the ZUS uh, or um, tax offices won't be able to have the, uh, take those money from the entity itself because it has no money at this point, they may go for the management board. So how to distribute this responsibility? And surprisingly, in my opinion, this uh, these three ways, these three parts of your daily base uh, activity are the best to somehow mitigate it. First of all, insurance. And to be honest, from my point of view, and this is always what I'm saying to my clients, it doesn't matter if you are new or not. If you are starting your own business, even as a sole proprietorship, or if you are stretching all the money that you have just to start a commercial company, I don't know, limited liability of, or any other, you need, to find, you need to find money for the insurance. Second thing is hierarchy, and it's usually something that people forget because this should somehow flawlessly go into the proper agreements, uh, but hierarchy helps distribute uh, responsibilities, among, uh, responsibilities among the team and helps with the production, resulting from less responsibility during the um, publishing uh, moment. And the third thing is agreement. So the agreement should be should resulting from those first two, so the insurance and hierarchy, it should be tailored, factually accurate. So, in case of insurance, for my clients, my advice is always these two. First one, business liability insurance, so OC, Ubezpieczenie Działalności Gospodarczej Prowadzonego Biznesu. So, in the case of business liability insurance, it's worth using a broker, not an agent, a broker. In Polish law, broker will be always paid by the insurance company uh, w with which the contract eventually will be signed. But the difference between broker and agent or multi-agent is that he should help you, first of all, find insurance for your business and then maybe tailor it, change, maybe try to negotiate a little bit on your behalf. Of course, always I do recommend go to the lawyer and give them this agreement to check it one more time. But if you go to the agent or multi-agent, he will just have product. A product that he cannot change, he cannot negotiate, he would like to sell it. With game dev, there is quite a big problem, especially with new ones or during the production that is financed for, from uh, investors or publishers who are uh, co-financing the production because in your books, during the production time, usually you will have losses. And insurance companies have a very big problem with uh, giving insurance to the companies that have losses. That's why broker is very, very good idea here, because he understands your business, or should at least try to understand it, and he can talk directly to the insurance companies, and can, they can try to create product just for you. It's not very common, but it is possible. The second type of the insurance uh, that I would recommend very much to everybody who has some kind of uh, other entity than sole proprietorship is DNO. This is directors and officers insurance. Uh, to be honest, it's not very popular in Poland. However, it is. It exists for many, many years. I think at least 15 or something like that. Um, this is the insurance of directors, management board, supervisory board of the company. And this is against uh, damage caused by management board. Uh, it protects personal belongings, personal assets of such people. 
So this is a, a civil responsibility insurance that is bought by the company for their directors, high management, uh, management board, supervisory board. Uh, this is uh, mostly, in my opinion, mostly uh, very resourceful, resourceful when you are uh, having someone come to your company to run it instead of you as a management board or supervisory board or something like that. First of all, uh, if somebody is going to the uh, new company, newly established, or to the company that they don't know about, for example, they are moving abroad and stuff like that, this is something you can negotiate with your contract. Uh, because uh, then your responsibility will be limited uh, both on the side of the company because they can be saved that in case of any damages uh, such person has an insurance and they can get some money out of it and on the other hand on the side of the such person who is working for them this is just safer sleep uh, they can just sleep normally work normally take some risk hopefully con good considering but still take some risk and run uh, your business or just conduct in a way that they should, not worrying that uh, in case of any problems they will run out of money and they will lose everything. Hierarchy. So with the hierarchy it's a little bit more complicated because it's hard to introduce hierarchy if you have a running company uh, and you never did it before. So it's easier to start with it. Now, at the, with the moment when you are uh, establishing your company, regardless of the legal form. So in the model case of a large and medium development studio, um, the division and scope of responsibility should be spread. It should be spread from the management board, through the uh, directors, producers, um, uh, seniors, mid, regulars, junior, down to the trainees. So responsibility for the performance of a given task or a given work, the part of the game, uh, should be smaller the lower the position in the company. On one hand, that creates situation when you know who is responsible for what. Uh, on the other hand, it's easier to um, it's easier to manage the risk in case of any damages and losses arising from as a result of those works. Uh, but also producers sort of love you when they have strict hierarchy in the firm and they know who is doing what. Uh, in the case of small studios and those where there is no possibility or a need for su such an executive structure, the distribution of the responsibility should begin and to be honest, should end it with an agreement with properly tailored agreement. Um, and the most important thing, uh, very commonly, especially with a uh, contract of work, umowa o dzieło, very, very important thing that we need to remember, it needs to be factually accurate. You cannot say that somebody will be just doing 2D models, because, because in case he won't do it, he won't be you won't be able to um, distingu distinguish which models he was about to prepare, what was his obligation. So every single agreement should be tailored and it should be exactly for the person that is on the opposite side. Yes, that means a little bit of more, more work that needs usually some annexes or appendices with specification of the work, but it is also very, very vital with the IP transfer, because uh, IP transfer in its core needs exact scope of the work, exact specification. When somebody from outside will come and look at the, for example, work contract that um, some concept artist wa was about to create such, such, such and such uh, work. So person who doesn't know the industry came uh, from outside should be able to say looking at the agreement and at uh, for example 12 or 15 pages of uh, somebody's artwork say okay so I think the concept that we are saying in the agreement are this 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 and this so the f uh, factually accurate agreement is the core of this and when you have clear factually accurate agreement then we are putting into this contractual penalties. In the event of non-performance, improper performance, 
or in the event of any other violation of, of legal uh, assurances, for example, that the work was the result of someone's original work, that he was the only author. author. And then two weeks later, oh, surprise, surprise, or what is worse after the, the publishing date. Somebody's like, hey, these are my assets. I don't remember selling them to you. So in general, thing that you need to remember is that the correct hierarchy uh, should be reflected in the contract, uh, regardless of the size of the studio. If you are a three-person studio, if you are a two-person studio, you should also divide your hierarchy. Uh, you should also divide your responsibilities, who is doing what, who is paying, uh, for example, taxes, who is uh, creating uh, budget plans, who is creating production plans and stuff like that. It's easier to talk when you know what you are responsible for. So what are the general rules of an agreement? First of all, uh, contractual provisions adapted to the type of contract. So it will be different with the employment contract, umowa uh, It will be different in the case of specific task. Uh, it will be different case in business to business type of contract. Second is contractual provisions tailored, as I said and mentioned many times before, to the type of entity being called the, uh, the other party of the contract. This is very, very important because in different, different, it will be different in a case of natural person and it will be different in a case of a company, for example, limited liability company. You cannot assume that you can use the same draft standardized type of contract with normal natural person who has no business, he's just doing some work for you, ex like for example, uh, RDD or something like that. And different if you are uh, conducting business with a professional company uh, who, uh, who serve, that's, uh, that's the service provider, for example, for programming. Uh, both of this agreement may be for example, umowa zlecenia, so uh, task contract, but they will be different. And the third part of this is always incorporate, incorporate an NDA provision into the contract or on the side. To be honest, this is a very strange thing because I have two types of clients. Either Every single one of them has an NDA. This is the first thing that they are signing usually during uh, hiring someone, during the process of recruitment, or even to talk about some business. Somehow they forgot that this is only for the part of the talks that is outside of the job. And they forgot to put it later on into the agreement or give it in the separate document that will be appendix. Or I have companies that forget about it about the recru uh, during the recruitment process or during the business talks, which is surprisingly and very scary for me. But they do remember about those during signing the contracts with employees, uh, subcontractors, etc. So please do remember. It, it should be always like an appendix or uh, a separate agreement, it doesn't matter. So why should every contract be adapted to the situation? Because not all provision, uh, provision can apply to all entities. So the scope of responsibility is different when there is a natural, natural person, person on the other side and different when there is a company, even though they may be the same contract. So we may up with the null provision if you want to adjust that. Um, the same type, type of contract uh, will be written differently depending on our expectation. The best example of that is, for example, service contract. Let's say that you are a good programmer and you want to provide someone with the services uh, of programming. This will be regular uh, service contract, programming services contract. It will be different if you will be subcontractor. It will be different if you want to subcontract someone to do this for you. It will be still the same type of agreement. It will be service agreement, but you want totally different things depending on what side you are on. And this is something you very often forget about, that umowa zlecenia will be always service agreement, but it will be different, it depends on who is on the other side. And the third thing is the use of contract temp templates without adjusting them leads to false sense of security. 
And the best example that everybody forgets is miarkowanie kary umownej, adjustment of contractual penalties. I don't know if you ever heard about that. This is small rule within Polish law uh, that says that there is possibility uh, of moderation of the contractual penalty by the court. If court will state it, thus there is a gross excessive amount of the penalties arising from the agreement. What that means is that there must be several criteria met. Uh, most important are gross excessive, um, no connection or little connection with the performance of the agreement, of the subject of the contract, and damages actually suffer. So putting in a very plain language, um, as a result of resolution of a penalty in the agreement, you cannot have unjustified enrichment. You cannot become a very rich person only because some poor junior graphic uh, said something wrong during some conference and he has had a penalty of 2 million zlotes in his agreement. No judge will go for it. So please, because I see this very often, don't include 5 million zlotes penalty if you have an agreement for a 7,000 zlotes. Every judge that will look at him will be like, ah, once again, and you will pay for lawyers, uh, and you will pay for other side lawyers because you will lost in such cases. There is no other way around it. So, uh, of course, it's different if you are hiring, for example, executive director who will be running 300 people company who has access to all delicate, all uh, very specific information about your business plan strategy for the next 10 years, etc., etc. If he spills some tea, the damages for you may be huge, but still you will have to prove the damages you have occurred. So, constructing appropriate contractual provision, first slide, reason. So, in general, you are asking yourself, what I'm afraid of? And with this question, in my opinion, it's the easiest way to determine, determine what, should, what should be put into the contract. These five are the main for this industry, in my opinion. So first of all, you are always afraid of breach of the contract, especially contractual confidentiality provision, but in general, breach of the contract. Second is infringement of copyrights, intellectual rights, third party rights, etc. This is pain in the ass for every game developer. I think that almost everyone here had come across such an agreement. It's usually very badly tailored. I don't know why. Maybe because uh, our act on property rights is quite old and it's a little bit artificial language, but this is something that is either improperly uh, written in the contract or sometimes even forget. I don't know why. Delays in the performance of the subject of the contract. And you can distinguish here a uh, repeated one or just one time off. I know one time, one time off sleep can happen to everyone, but still it depends on, on your needs. Because if you are looking for immediate help, for example, with programming and you need someone to do this because your previous didn't manage to do a task he was given, uh, then of course I do understand that uh, one time sleep leg and he didn't, he wasn't able to do it, or uh, he had some huge delay, is not the case for you. Of course, it will be different when you have a lot of time and this is a process and you have uh, months or years. Then, in my opinion, during the production, uh, you should somehow foresee that there may be some delays, some slips and stuff like that. Fourth thing is improper, pre, improper performance of the subject of the contract, so especially uh, with creative work. That's why the specification is very, very important here, because specification can help you to um, decide whether a task was performed in a proper way, in a proper manner, manner in full or in part. Do the, does this need uh, any other changes or not? And the last one, uh, the, the worst one, is failure to perform the subject of the contract. Yes, it does happen. Yes, people are always surprised. Yes, no one doesn't, no one understands it. But yes, it does happen. So those five things should be the core um, 
uh, core reasons why what are what are you afraid of what do you what do you want to have in your agreement so who and what kind of the contract so who will be on the other side what what kind of the contract are we signing this is very important because different type of contracts leads to different type of responsibilities the best example is employment contract umowa o pracę they are much more popular right now in the industry than they were two years ago for example but the rule with this type of contract is that the li liability is up to three times of the salary in case if breach is not the fault of the employee but it's still, it's three times the salary. So three times of the trainee salary and three times of the uh, senior producer or senior programmer, there is a huge difference. However, there is one um, exception we may say. Uh, if um, defective performance of products or services due to employer's fault results uh, in a reduction of the quality of the product or services provided, the remuneration may and shall be reducted, reducted accordingly. However, always, this is employee we are talking about, this is employment contract, so such conduct is quite um, complicated, but you have some possibilities in here. With B2B, so I'm saying here general business to business, any business to any business, sole proprietorship to partnership, partnership to companies, uh, free parties at one time, whatever you like, I won't judge. In general, you need to remember to guarantee the professional nature, nature of services provided. So please, let's don't pretend that, for example, um, company who usually does testing will be great at localization. Uh, if you are conducting professional business and you are uh, going to B2B agreements, uh, you need to check other side. If they are professionally doing the things that they are, will conduct for you during the, the, under this agreement that you want to sign. And you should confirm the current civil liability insurance. This is very important because, for example, you have a limited liability company on the other hand with share capital of 5,000 zlotes. Uh, they will want to do their job uh, resulting from the contract and it doesn't matter that there will be, I don't know, 50,000 zlotes penalty for uh, underperformance or non-performance because they may not have any money at all. So, first of all, having an insurance, having a proof that they have this insurance and uh, also guarantee that during the that during the time of the contract that they will still have this insurance it doesn't matter that i have insurance at this moment if i need to renew it in the next month if i won't do it and i signed with you contract right now for example for one year so after first month you know i'm naked i have nothing i have no insurance uh, you have no uh, prove that I am not having one. That's why you always need to ask uh, for uh, additional insurance, for an uh, additional proof that when the insurance will be um, will be end, uh, when meet the end of the agreement, that they will renew it. Uh, it's also uh, quite important, in my opinion, to gar uh, guarantee liability on the strict, so odpowiedzialność na zasadzie ryzyka. So running a business is always a risk. Uh, from your point of view, in this kind of uh, contract, it's uh, very important to say whether the liability uh, is uh, arising from the risk for the strict liability, from the strict liability, or only by fault. So in general, in business to business, we always remember to put liability on a strict rules and not guilty basis, because on the, it, it's hard to uh, show, uh, um, to, to prove guilt on the part of the company. Uh, and of course, it's very important to extend uh, agreement uh, on the penalties and the responsibilities to non-performance or improper performance. Because if you want to put it very clearly into the agreement, then well, you have a problem, if anything will uh, happen later on. And the different kind of uh, provisions, the different kind of things you should remember will be with the, for example, contract of mandate, so umowa zlecenia or uh, contract for specific work, umowa o dzieło, because 
on one hand, it's good to confirm that the person uh, who is signing this agreement has an experience in this type of agreement, that they're in, this type, in this field uh, that the agreement is about. But on the other hand, if you are hiring trainee for three months, it's hard to uh, accept, you know, that he's uh, expected that he will be in 20s, uh, having eight years of experience. So this is something you need to uh, remember, but it is also important from your part to, ha part to have a guarantee that someone has an experience in this field. Uh, very important thing with uh, any contract with natural person is to guarantee that the services or work will be provided by the, by the person you are signing agreement with. Because if you want specific programmer, you want specific programmer. If you want specific composer, you want the specific composer, not some entity that he uh, subcontracted to. So you need to say that he, that person will be the only one providing services. That person will be only one doing the work, will be only author. And any exceptions uh, can be prior, prior to your written consent, for example. So just be sure that when you are uh, ordering something from someone, that person will be responsible for this. And of course, uh, it's nice to uh, extend it to non-performance, improper performance, um, if, especially if it was the result of willful misconduct. So not only fault, but also willful misconduct. This is something that you should remember. Yes, and just summarizing and going through the questions. If you do uh, the application of those three basic principles, so insurance, hierarchy, and then agreements, um, will guarantee you some kind of risk, dis risk distribution. You should have this very nice triangle, so from the top, from the management, from the owners, through, the, through all the staff, for the directors, officers, management, then to seniors, uh, directors, sorry, then seniors, meet, regular, junior, etc. That means that on the one hand, you have, one hand you have better motivated uh, employees and subcontractors. Uh, they know what are the responsibilities, they know what they need to do. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it should reduce the responsibility on the part of the studio. So, for example, in the event of copyright infringement, which right now are, are very hot topic, but on the other hand, if you, co if you conclude your agreement in a proper way, then you will be secure and safe, from, for example, from um, delays on reviews of milestone by your publisher. So you won't be without the money, uh, the cash flow will be provided because the fault will be, uh, or, or the delay will be on the part of other party. And ending with that, if you have any questions, Polish English doesn't matter, thank you very much. No, okay, okay, okay. Someone, anything? Not that I'm pushing, but still. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, could you give us some examples of most common reasons that game development companies go to court? That means are sued or sue other companies? My are not. Uh, just <laughs> no, they, general reasons. No, no. I mean, um, I think right now more and more, more cases will be about IP infringements. Uh, this is the first thing. Uh, second thing, unfortunately, uh, it's uh, labor, uh, labor law, uh, labor court, uh, especially with the studios that were pushing too hard, giving uh, basic agreements like work agreements, where in fact people were uh, doing unemployment contract things. So this one. And in general, uh, it's hard for me uh, to answer this question because my role is that we are not going to court. I, I am always trying to prepare my, my agreement that harshly that they, there won't be any need. Um, I might have one case where, where, where there were problems during closing the company, so selling of the IP, but this was afterwards, not during the daily base um, activities. So yeah, so in my opinion, the more and more we are into this industry, more years are coming, it will be more and more about the IP infringements. Sure. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>
someone. Yes. Uh, so we we could hear uh, some examples uh, when uh, the details uh, involved in the agreement for employment and b two b agreement are so important. Uh, you gave us example about transferring i p Can I ask about uh, more cases when uh, such details involved in the agreement are important and second question uh, can I ask about examples when uh, we are going to the uh, to the court uh, more specific examples about IP uh, who is su suing uh, the company and uh, in which cases thank you so let's start from the second maybe I don't know why just because it's more comfortable at the moment <laughs> uh, so uh, this <laughs> For, for example, this, uh, with the second question, the one very interesting case uh, that was a few years ago, however, I'm not sure whether it went to court or not. Uh, the case was about the font. The company was publishing the game for the Asian market, Chinese, and they went to some online shop to buy fonts that will be best suited for the game art that they had. And even though I know that they have read all the uh, regulation on the page, uh, everything that was they for, I don't know whether they didn't see it or, or they didn't read it you know, very carefully. They didn't saw that uh, payment free use of this font that they downloaded is only possible for non-commercial use. And the problem was, that they, <laughs> uh, the, for the first time they've heard about this problem was, I think, when there was beta. Uh, but yeah, I think it was beta that they put on the market for the testing. And the guy uh, who owned the font from the, uh, and was putting it on that shop, uh, he, he contacted them and said that, um, yeah, okay, it's very nice, but this will be commercially used. So according to the um, regulations that you agreed upon uh, buying through that store, now you need to pay me, I think, 3% of your income or something like this. And you're like, oh, no, please don't do that. So in general, they were forced in three months to change all font in all the game for the Chinese market. And believe me, it was not a game with not that many words. I think they were forced to have a subcontractor doing it. So, the, and if this went to court, I think that would be very straightforward uh, case because they would probably, except maybe for the border issue and, you know, uh, proper jurisdiction. So they were just, yeah, they would just probably have to file uh, uh, the copy of the regulations that they agreed upon and the proof that the game was uh, upon the commercial uh, uh, issue and that's all. They would win that and they would be forced to pay them. I think, I think it was 3%. It was too much for the font, let's say like this. And they would be able to, uh, they, sh they should be, you know, reliable and pay that. But fortunately, they just, you know, withdraw it for, for a month, yeah. I think they pushed everything for a month or something like that. And um, about other delay, well, in general, uh, in general, uh, the scope of detailing in the agreement for your first question, it always depends on which side you are and what is your best interest. Uh, in my opinion, in every case of the work agreement, umowa dzieła, the more detailed, the better. Uh, unless you are able to do that, uh, because not always, uh, not always it is possible to uh, have very, very proper, very good specification. And but on the other hand, having this under set, not specificate enough, it's also a risk. Uh, IP is like totally different thing because uh, a proper and successful transfer or licensing of an IP law uh, must be in written form with uh, all fields of exploitation written down and uh, the work, the art that 
this is about need to be specific that it need to be very specific you need to know what kind of ip and to what you are transferring to you are licensing uh, whether you can distribute it whether you can do some modification if you did the modification and it created another work whether you can use this work if you want regulate it uh, you will, your hands will be tied. You need to either have an annex if another person will agree upon that. So the IP law is the, the uh, IP laws in general are the best example of this type of detailing. Uh, of course, NDA, any type of uh, non-disclosure um, uh, prov provisions in the agreement, the more specific, the better. Uh, it will be probably different with, not probably, it will be different with um, uh, people who are in the creative business, meaning, for example, the, they are graphic designers, uh, they are uh, concept artists, uh, etc. And it will be different if you are a programmer and especially if you are uh, evolving some kind of app. Because uh, for on the programmer side, for example, you will have uh, also protection of the know-how of the uh, source codes of the anything that will be resulting from his work it will be totally different with the, the with the art on the side because uh, if your work is creative in the way that you are creating for example uh, graphics uh, models etc you will be protecting totally different thing you will be protecting your result using your result you will be protecting um contacts you have, you will be protecting agreements you have signed, the projects that are upon and before you, that you know that you will be doing. So, in general, in my opinion, it is better to have longer, more detailed agreement than to have very open, very short. But of course, always there may be some situation when you don't need that much specification because lack of specification can give you some kind of freedom and especially in execution of the responsibility. Uh, so, as always, in lawyer's language, it depends. Always, and please don't be mad at us because really, lately, someone just ha ha me when he asked me during the teleconference, very complicated case, he asked me something, something, and I, and I said, well, it depends. And they were like, oh, and I'm like, okay, we are in the kindergarten again. And I'm like, but it really it depends. It depends on so many cases, so I need to know more. But it really depends. So let's start with these three things, and you should be okay for now. And later on, we can go crazy and do more specific things. So. Something more? Yeah? Um, I have a follow-up question about the IP infringement mm -hmm. case. Um, do we always have time to fix our wrongdoings? And what I mean by that is if we are contacted by someone because we used uh, an unlawfully used uh, image or font or whatever, uh, is it always like that, that we're given time, to, sometime months, weeks, to fix it? Or is it sometimes like that, that we're already contacted and someone already wants money, mm -hmm. uh, is suing us or, 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 or something like? They didn't have time. They just uh, take the game off. And the month was the time that they spent on, uh, you know, eliminating the font. So they didn't have time, they just decided it will be less risky to change it than to go with it because they knew that there won't be any other, uh, any other way. Mm -hmm. uh, their thought was there. You know, they didn't read it carefully enough or something like that. Mm -hmm. So in general, no, usually you don't have much time. But, but do I have any? No. Okay. As a, I mean, as a developer. Uh, yes. Yeah, no, you don't have. Okay. If you infringe someone's rights, you did it. It happened already. Okay. So then you need to, again, mitigate the risk. So you okay. need to think whether it is the best to change something, to withdraw something from the store, uh, to maybe contact the other part and say, I'm sorry. Sometimes mm -hmm. it happens. Barely, but sometimes saying sorry is nothing wrong, you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, in general, if you did something, you did something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. But, this may be like silver uh, lining around that. With the case, I cannot be very, very specific, but on uh, Apple Store, uh, one 
party said that they there were some infringements in general that uh, the game of my clients was totally copied from theirs of course it wasn't and it went very smoothly uh, because it, w it went through official uh, Apple support. Uh, the claim was filed, I think, let's say on Monday. Uh, we uh, g gave them response, I think, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, that uh, this is not, of course, the copy that we can um, show, of course, to the Apple employees without uh, disclosing it to the party that complained uh, source codes. And I think... I don't remember, uh, not perforce, but from some other, you know, uh, some other program that d was stated what and when was done exactly. So they ca they had full proof that they were doing this on their own, what they were using, etc. And I think on Friday it was the end. Mm -hmm. the, c the claim was, uh, I don't, I, but I don't know whether the claim was withdrawn they dis or they decided that there are no basis on the claim and that ended. If that didn't end it, we would end up in the court in the US, but, you know, so it is possible. Okay, so basically, if we, if we violate someone's IP, uh, it's only a matter of their goodwill, whether they give us time to fix it or yes. whether they go to court straight yes, away. Yes, with the time, it's okay. always the goodwill of the person who okay. was hurt. Okay, thank because you. Because you did very bad. <laughs> I think we have uh, like a few minutes or maybe even two minutes left, so... I don't know if anyone, anything. No, thank you, time off. Thank you very much. I'm stressed enough. And thank you for coming. <laughs>